Thank you very much. Yes, I know something about the incident. On 28th of June, in the morning, I received a call that at dawn of 27th June 2021, one man called Kaka in Nigeria was clubbed by an unknown person, C-L-U-B, by an unknown person, and had been rushed to the hospital. That very day, I traveled to Accra to have a meeting on that day in the evening and then the following day. Meeting of all the 16 regional ministers in the country. While I was at A.H. Hotel, in East Legon, Accra, I received a call in the evening, the same day, 28th June 2021, that the third Kaka had passed on. Later, I received several calls from Nigeria that because of the demise of Kaka, some youth, youth in the town were planning to cause problems in the town. And that some of them had gone to the police station to cause mayhem. On that note, I called the commanding officer for battalion, for BN, in the person of Lieutenant Colonel Pepra. to dispatch some of the Operation Calm Life teams to go to Edra to provide protection 
during that night. The return of the left Ejra on in the morning of sorry, in the morning of 29th June 2000. minute. Yes, uh, can you repeat your sentence? Uh, I called Lieutenant Kenefepra to dispatch some of the Operation Calm Life team to go to Ejra to provide protection during. He didn't get that aspect. What um, I said is, I called Lieutenant Kendall Pepra, commanding officer for battalion, or for BN, to dispatch some of the teams of Operation Calm Life. to provide protection in the town during the night. Honorable, with, with all due respect, to be clear about the dates, may I, may I know from you which of the dates, 28th or 29th, that you received the information of the possible disturbances, and, and when the uh, army officer dispatched his men, 28th or 29th? That was on 28th of June, 2021. That the information was received? Okay. That the information was received yes. by you? Okay. And it was that same day in the evening. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You may continue. All right. So the team returned the following day in the morning. That is 29th June. 2021. That they provided security during the night, the whole night, and the teams returned from Nigeria in the morning of 29th June 2021. After they had returned, I received another intelligence that the people have decided to go and ban the police station houses in which some two accused persons had been arrested by the police and also caused damage to other properties in Nigeria. Honorable, once again, can I find out that you talked about an, some accused persons or let's say suspects had been arrested by the police? Two people. What were they suspected to have done? Was it the killing the, of the man or causing ramping? It was alleged that they might have clubbed Kaka for which it resulted to his death. So it was in, the, in relation to Kaka's clubbing and consequent subsequent death. You may continue. Honorable. So when I heard the intelligence on 29th June 2021, I requested Lieutenant Kendall Pepra to again send some personnel to go and support the police. I took this decision, the police,
I took this decision in line with the security and intelligence agencies act act 10 30 and specifically section 5 that establishes regional security council then section 6 that gives the membership of the regional security council and also makes the regional minister chairman of the regional security council and section 7 that gives the function of Regional Security Council. Which includes maintenance of peace and security in the region. The commanding officer, as I requested, despite some personnel to address, to support the police in the maintenance of peace and security. Later in the day, while I was in the meeting of the regional minister, at A.H. Hotel, in East Ligon, Accra. I received unfortunate news that there had been shooting during the maintenance of peace in the draft. and two lives have been lost. And others injured. I also received information that some properties had been destroyed or vandalized. The following day, 
I had to quickly organize regional security council meeting. That is on the 30th of June, 2021. where I received briefing on the incident at Edra. Honorable Mayor, I ask, please, where was this meeting held? Not exactly where, but Kumasi Waka. The meeting was held in Kumasi. Okay. Thank you. At Yasan. My, my, uh, don't worry about the details. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So we agreed to move to Idra the following day, the 5th of July, 2021. To have first-hand information on the ground. When we got to Edra, we first called on the police. For briefing. We were later joined by the Minister for Interior, Honorable Ambrose Derry. Together we went to the palace of Ejrahini to meet the chief and his elders for briefing. From the palace, we called on the family of the two who died during the incident and Kaka who also clubbed and died. All the three families, we visited them. During the visit, the Minister of Interior gave some money for the initial expenses, even though we had been informed by Ejrahne that he had also paid for some of the initial expenses. While the amount, 7,000 to each of the family, so 7,000. From there, we visited the three families of the injured. Unfortunately, we met only one. The, the remaining two were still at the hospital. The one we met I remember the name very well. It's called Nu 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 Beda Nu Beda. Forgotten the other name. He was injured in the thigh, and it had been bandaged. So he went to a draft hospital. He was treated and discharged. So we met him. The remaining two were still at the hospital. And as I speak, one hour is still 
at Konfuanochi teaching hospital. The other injured was sent to Duayang in Kwanta hospital. Actually, I've not been there. On the same day in the evening, that is on the first, and I, I received some video showing some of the footprints of whatever happened. Some of them, go on, you can go on. Some of them indicating that, that from the, the video, some you were chasing the police water cannon vehicle. Which the police was using to disperse the crowd. Honorable, do you have the said video clips that you are talking yes, about? Yes, please, I can. I have it on WhatsApp. I can WhatsApp them to the committee, if you so wish. We will have to play it first and see if it is relevant for our work. Then we will get the IT officer to download it. All right. Load it. All right. Yes. Yes, Richard. IT, please, uh, can you show? Wait. No, no. Come on, there.
they were attacking the police and even the water cannon vehicle that the police was using to spray water on the crowd to disperse them. The angry youth were chasing were chasing the vehicle and the driver did very well reversed because they were going facing the vehicle if the driver had moved forward definitely the casualties would have been more than what we witnessed fortunately the driver could reverse up to a point where he had a bypass to use, avoiding running into the crowd. At that point, as I was informed, then the military moved forward for the, uh, for the police to go behind because that method to display the crowd failed. It was during that period I was told that the incident of whether shooting or whatever took place. They asked you who gave the shots. I have not been told yet. or to say it has not been established yet. I was also informed that one Abe, A-B-E-E, -E, Abe, Wakaz, W A K E Z. Wakaz. Went to Accra to organize a press conference. that the disease that is kaka was a member of the fix the country campaigners it was also alleged that Kaka was a member of the National Democratic Congress in Nigeria. He returned on the night of 28 June 2021 and reached the on 29th June 2021. Honorable, please, who are you talking about? Who returned? Abi Wakas from Accra back to Ejra.
and went to the cemetery with the youth and after the burial of the body of the late Kaka requested the youth to march to town and start their actions. And that is where the whole crisis started. And we got to the point where we are now. Okay, Honorable, may it be made clear, can we find out this information about how things actually occurred leading to the shooting? You said you received information. Was this information part of the briefing you received? official briefing or it was information you received generally uh, it was part of the briefing that was the shooting it was part of the briefing because the meeting took place on 31st i'm uh, sorry 30th june and the incident had taken place on 29th of june so it was part of the briefing but the case of abi wakar I was told in the draft. That is on the 1st of July. Honorable, will you speak into the microphone? We are not getting. Uh, she asked whether the information about the shooting. Yes, uh, we know. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, kindly speak to the microphone so that we are this side with her. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is that yes, please. Okay. My Lord, the witness has completed his evidence. Where is the IT officer? Are you set? You can show. We, we will wait a little while. We are about to uh, finish the downloading so that we can play. Let me try to forward to them. And then... Please give us a few more minutes and the panel members will then, after watching, they could ask you some questions. Yes, uh, Honorable Minister, whilst we are waiting, uh, Members of the committee will have opportunity to ask questions for clarification or whatever nature for you to answer. Okay, my sister. Honorable Minister. Honorable. Is it working? working now is it working now okay honorable minister um how, how would you characterize the the people of Ejra? how do i characterize the the people of Ejra? oh i should say they are very good people they are nice people i've been there on several occasions even during political campaign, I've been had opportunity to work with Kaka sometimes. Uh, until this, I've not seen much problem. But Edra, any time the election is marked as one of the hotspots, 
when it comes to politics. During elections, we always mark it as one of the hot spots. And it has been a hot spot because it's one of the few constituencies that the National Democratic Congress most often wins. The MPP has won it only once. So any time the elections, uh, the tension is very high. Now, Honorable, you said you um, received information or intelligence about the actions of the youth. And what was the source of the intelligence? Was this official or from the community? And related to that, the person called me on my phone and told me, and several people called me, but I cannot divulge uh, the source of my information. I so cannot. these are from the community and not from the intelligence units that, or agencies that are state-owned? Some came from the intelligence agencies. Some came from the community. Honorable, you, you say that you uh, immediately on the 29th called the uh, operation Calm Life after you'd received some information. Why was this the first group of persons that you would call and not the police service, for example? Yes, I called Operation Calm Life on 28th of June to go and provide security, support the police to provide security there because already they had attacked the police station and I had asked the regional police commander to send reinforcement. It has been one of my security strategies since 2017 where I realized it's difficult for the police alone I called the military or which over the, uh, which, whichever of the security agencies that would be relevant in that case. Sometimes, for instance, when we are going to fight illegal miners, galamseers, we even add immigration so that after arrest, they can even screen the people to know whether we have foreigners among them. So I've used strong collaboration among the various security agencies in the region. Again, it's not the first time. As far back as 1992, I wouldn't even go to the First Republic and Second and Third Republic, under the Fourth Republic. As far back as 1992, when Operation Cow Lake was established, it was a collaborative effort between the police and the military. Currently, Operation Calm Life is collaborative effort between the police and the military. Thank you. Uh, the fight against what people call Fulani Health Menace in Agogo, which, when I took over the administration in 2017, had been there for 25 good years with that solution. The fight had always been co collaborative efforts between the police and the military. In 2017, we added additional leg where the military provided air services to detect the direction of the animals and communicated with the ground troops, which enabled us to solve the perennial problem that we had at Agogo, Santiago Chimago. And as we speak today, at Santiago Chimago, that used to buy food stamps from Jaso, Kondongo, Ejusu, etc., to go and eat. Now, because of that joint effort and the success of it, Santiago Chimago is exporting plantain to Ugadugu. Say that we have Santiago Chim plantain market in Ogadugu and they are exporting maize. So this collaborative effort has helped me since I took over 
in 2017. Very well. Thank you, Honorable. Yes, Honorable. Good morning once again. Good morning. Well, I think from your experience, you've been at the forefront of managing or fighting crisis when they emanate in your region. You cogently quoted the security, the security and intelligence uh, act. Very cogent. But this committee, one is a fact-finding one, and at the same time making recommendations. I'm going to start from that end. I hope the same uh, the intelligence act that you quoted has one way or the other helped in giving us a certain structure at the strategic level where you are involved, take strategic decisions at the operational and tactical levels. Are you sure the act was fully obeyed in this instance? Yes, it was obeyed under the circumstances. Security issues, there are some of them you can go through the whole process. There are others, if you do that, the end results will be chaotic. Exactly, that is my point. And we need to find out whether we need to further elaborate on the act. In this instance, you called in the military at the point when you know the police are overwhelmed. So you called in. Did you have a, at least an emergency meeting at the strategic level One. Be able to be able to call in the military? One impossibility. Come again. It was impossible to call the strategic meeting. I was in a meeting in Accra, regional ministers' meeting in Accra. Two, if I had wanted to call the meeting, the only possibility was through Zoom. Meanwhile, we had people at the forefront and events running. So I couldn't jeopardize the life, many lives of the people of Edra and also the security agencies. So there and then, I had no other option but to call in reinforcement from the military. So how the, does the RECSEC work? If the minister is not available, then RECSEC does not work? And it previously, when we had deputy ministers, any time the regional minister wasn't around, the deputy minister took over. Under the current circumstances, what we have agreed at RESEC is that in the absence of the regional minister, the regional police commander will coordinate affairs. All right. The police have their own standard operation, operation, operation pro procedures, and the military have their own. In crisis management, we call it interagency cooperation. And so if one agency who is in charge, it can be NADMO. If NADMO is overwhelmed, they know whom to call. They know whom to call. Did you see that working? Because from where I sit, I know if the police are overwhelmed, um, they go through the process to call in the military. And they give them a briefing. And they meet to at least work out a joint operational strategy. Did that happen in the Ejura case? In the case of Ejura, it would have been very difficult to have that because the police were already in the thick of affairs. So withdrawing or taking time, say we are regrouping and taking a, a security strategy or something, would have been difficult. So you see, under such critical circumstances, uh, Prof, uh, you, you have to consider the lives of the people rather than following strict bureaucratic processes and people will lose their lives. Why that is I why I've said even that the man, uh, if you are lucky and we are able to play the clip, the driver of the water cannon vehicle must be rewarded because he took a very intelligent position to reverse, even though it was risky uh, because the language they were saying I don't understand how that, but those who interpreted to me said, uh, we've, defeated, we've defeated them, they are running away, they are running away. So, assuming the vehicle has stopped, 
in this chance of what happened. Honorable, whilst I agree with you that in such circumstances it is difficult to follow procedures, it is worse when procedures are not followed and more lives are lost. In my experience, and we teach them, I was not saying the police should stop, but on the ground, there is a way to call in the military, brief them before they also take a strategic position. At least what I can see at this point is once they ask the military to come forward, definitely some discussions went on. Okay. Once they ask the military to move forward, not always the police will lead and the military will give them the support. But once the police ask the military to come forward, it presupposes some discussions went on. It is this takeover position which I strongly will recommend for this committee to let government know. We train them together. Unfortunately, these things are not done. But maybe because the politicians also interfere. Oh, uh, I, I cannot, I cannot say it in, under such circumstances. This particular circumstance, I won't say it. Uh, the political side, I don't like. Is after, after uh, somebody had hit Kaka with whatever, uh, maybe a stick or something. I don't know the object. And then his subsequent demise. And people said he was an NDC, which is not true, which was on the airways all over. And that he was a member of uh, uh, Fix the Country campaigners. You know, these one inflamed passions the more. That is a political piece I didn't like. Maybe if this angle had not come and we had allowed the police to investigate and know the culprit, maybe we didn't have gotten to where we are now. So I agree with you sometimes some of the political com comments is not favorable and it, uh, uh, it, it, it don't help this country. Thank you, Honorable. Finally, my point to you, what would you recommend to the committee in cases of crisis management using the police and the military? Uh, to me, I've used this strategy all this while. This is the first time we've had casualty. Uh, I think we should continue with it, but there should be more education and that we should improve upon the communication between the various security agencies and ask how to act under such circumstances. I said that was my final one, but please again, this is a more, direct, more directly to you. Um, what would you recommend about Ghana's, the canopy on Ghana's in discipline? The, you know, what I would recommend is that all persons... In, in the first place, do you accept that Ghana is so undisciplined? I accept it. Good. So there are a lot of indiscipline in the system. Because if it's not indiscipline, how on earth, youth, some of them around 10 years, 12 years, chasing what I cannot be go. So what should the nation do as a politician? What we should do is that, one, we people at the top of affairs, we should be very truthful to ourselves and say the truth as it is, irrespective who, of the consequences. Who bears the card? Who starts it? Who bears the card? We the politicians. Thank you. Yes, Honorable, you have given us a video of certain parts of the incident that happened in Nigeria. Can you tell the committee the source of this video? Uh, some of the people who were giving me the intelligence, they sent the videos to me. And as, as I've said earlier, I can't divulge the source. Thank you. Can you help us get the person who did the recording of the video to come and testify? Oh, uh, it will be very difficult because tomorrow they won't give me. It will be very difficult because tomorrow I'm afraid people will not be willing to give me information. Very well. Uh, Honorable, 
we want to assure you that if the person is willing to come, we will hear his evidence in camera and uh, his identity will not be disclosed. Distinguished members of the committee think that the source is Simon or Semenza. What I said is that take it that you got the video from Simon Osei Mensa, the regional minister. Uh, the fact is that you did not take this video by yourself. Somebody recorded it. And uh, if we want to interrogate the video recording, you may not be in a position to answer questions emanating from the video recording. However, yes, we know that uh, for security reasons, certain persons may not want to appear in public to testify. But we want to assure you that we can take evidence in camera where we think the necessities require. Okay, my Lord, I will consult the person and if the person is willing, I'll bring the person. Uh, let me find out from you also. Did you ever contact the MCE of a Jurassic City Municipal Assembly? After the issue, I spoke with him. Unfortunately, he was he traveled to Accra. After the incident, he was in Accra for the vetting of MMDC's at Jubilee House. So, since then, you have not met him personally? No. We want to look at the video. Is that all? Yes, uh, we have seen the video. Uh, I will still come back to my uh, question. You see, this is a video of part of an incident. You understand? And uh, if the committee will have to know the entire story, whoever took this video recording should be able to appear before us for us to interrogate him because it is like when a boxing match is uh, uh, going on, then first round, one of the boxers is knocked down. That does not mean the fight has ended. It starts from round, maybe round 10 or 12. Along the line, the man who was knocked down gets up and he wins the fight. You understand? So, having recorded this fra fraction of the evidence, maybe he has more of the evidence in his custody. That is why we want him, if you can advise him to come before the committee, to assist us with whatever evidence, further evidence that he has to enable us Unravel the truth. My, my Lord Chair, if I bring the person, is going to make my management of security in this region difficult. All that then I want to say is that nobody should give me any intelligence again. Because I'll put all my numbers out there at various radio stations that any time you have information, you can reach me on these numbers. And people voluntarily give me information. That is going to cease. I'm afraid. Honorable Minister. It will seriously affect my management of security in this region. Very well. Honorable Minister, um, since you received the video 
Have you shared it with anybody within Ejura to no. identify that this indeed was Ejura and this isn't a different community or verified that the video was taken at the time at which it, you say it was taken? I have had discussions with the police and they confirmed. And that so it was the video Ejura. has been confirmed as having been taken at the time and also within the Ejura constituency. Yes, please. Remembering and I, I, and that... The, and I put it on the Regional Security Council platform. And this is important because you yourself have said that Ejura has always been a hotspot. There's been various incidences. And so this could well be one of those incidences and the tape could well be doctored. And so it's important that we establish the authenticity of the tape. Yes, by the time maybe you finish hearing all the witnesses, if there's a need to call me and come and testify again, I'm prepared to do that. If by that time you've not had enough evidence on the tape, on the clip, you can invite me again, I'll come. Honorable, we will accept the video and uh, we'll decide as to uh, whether or not please uh, admit the video in evidence and mark it as Exhibit A. Yes, Honorable, I'm coming back to the earlier issue. You know the mandate of the committee is to ascertain the truth and advise and make recommendations accordingly. Yes, it is the duty of every Ghanaian who has information that will assist the committee to arrive at the right decision and to make appropriate recommendations. This includes the security services, informants and under the rules of court and our laws a person may testify before the committee or a court when in the view of the tribunal adjudicating or sitting on the matter the identity of the person who is to testify will be in jeopardy to take the testimony in camera meaning that only that person will appear before us not in public but in uh, the office the media will not be there but for us to interrogate him further on the happenings in this video clip. I will therefore plead with you once again to reconsider and to reassure whoever sent you the video to think about coming to assist us to get the needed evidence and information for okay. our way. My Lord Chairman, I will discuss with the person if the person is prepared to appear in camera, I'll bring the person. Whatever he says, I'll get back to you. But I will not damage the life of the person for the person to come here and sit in public. I can't. I cannot do that. Honorable, you, Honorable, you have all that right. But the point is this, that to assist the committee. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but the little I know is that this, your video may be thrown away because you are not the author and you can't identify anybody in there. But if we get the person who comes to us, I mean, we have a way of recording and reporting. In camera, we can let him aid us to get to the bottom of this matter. 
Nobody is going to be imprisoned just because you have appeared before us. And, but if you don't do that, then this video is of no use to us. That, that, that's the bottom, bottom Prof, line. the video is from the regional minister. I will not danger the person's life. I won't. Very well. We are grateful to you, Honorable. And uh, you are discharged. We thank you for finding time to testify before us. Thank you very, very much. Grateful. I'm very grateful. If there's a need to recall me, I'm ever ready. We will do so. Thank you. Thank you.